two, one. What a week, what a weekend. Welcome, we are the Red Hot Underdogs on Anzac. And with me on this magical sport weekend, ever incredible, long contained, often imitated, never duh, 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 duplicated, hands together for the man, Drewy. Hey, buddy. Hello, Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast for all the unfunny comedians, the magicians without any tricks, and all of my friends in Cell Block 6. Oh, yes. So, cheers, to, cheers to all of you. And also to all of the Swans fans that are heavily in mourning this morning, including myself. It was a hard, hard, long day yesterday. Yep. Oh, my God. We are going to get to the rugby league. We're going to get to the prelim finals. Yep. But I'm going to rip off that Band-Aid and get straight to the Swans. The Swannies. What Sydney. were your thoughts? Sydney Swannies, uh, well, um, they. It, it, what? how embarrassing for a team to dominate all year and to be the hands-down favourite and for two years ago to happen to the same thing will happen, the same thing happen, get to the grand final and completely fluff it up. Uh, maybe they were in it for the first quarter, yeah? Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. They... Oh, not really a little bit, but by half time it was completely Over. finished. Yeah. Well, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was completely done at half time. It was 73 to 27. Half the time? Bri- yes. Oh, the br- 40 something. Yeah. 46, 46 behind at half time. 46 points behind. And you knew it was finished because not only is that almost an unassailable lead to track down, but it was the biggest deficit by a side in grand final history for the AFL. Yeah, wow. Well, so, at at half time. Yeah, things just weren't flowing well for us, unfortunately. Oh, well done to Coach Chris Fagan for the Brisbane Lions. Well done for the Norm Smith medalist, which was Will Ashcroft, very good player, had an extremely good game. Other notable performances that came from the Brisbane Lions were Joe Danaher, Dane Zorko, Lockie Neal, Loman, and all the rest of the boys. You could name all of them. I, they they all played brilliantly. Unfortunately, they got the, the Norm Smith medal that quite rightfully went to Will Ashcroft. I had high hopes for the Swan. Tell, tell us about this Norm Smith medal. So it is just for the GF, right? Yes, the grand final man of the match. Yep, yep. And I... Going in with high hopes, I put a hundred dollars on Isaac Heaney oh, to no. win the Norm Smith Medal, and by half time, my ticket from the TAB had become wedding confetti. Yeah, a hundred dollar wedding confetti at half time. I don't think you're allowed wedding confetti paper anymore. You've got to have um, you've got to have rice. You throw rice at people, isn't that right? Look, it was all irrelevant because in the pub that I was in, it was no wedding. It was certainly a funeral. Yeah, yeah. Funeral. Even red. It was a red oh, funeral. Even though, as weird as I am, I prefer funerals to weddings, but that's yeah. a story for another day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I needed to vent last night. I had my own psychology session on the couch. Yeah. So... I even wrote my own red hot underdogs, green eggs and ham style of poem, which oh, nice. I'm just going to give you and all the rest of our listeners right now. Okay. Okay. Here it is to the Swans. We won't, we can't win a premiership while watching at home. We can't win one when in Rome. We can't win one for you or me. We can't win one when it's live and free. We can't win one snorting a gram. We can't win one, truth be damned. 
We can't win one eating green eggs and ham. We can't make a grand final tight. We are the poor old red and white. Yeah, yeah. And so, that summed it up. Wait, two years ago, they got 60 points and, and the other, is that, no, 50, 50, 50. Two years yeah. ago, they got 50 something and, and who smashed The final it? score, sorry, yeah. the final score in that was Geelong winning 133 to 52. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago, yes. So this one, to all you Swan supporters, I thought the score was a very accurate representation of the game. Yeah. So Brisbane won 18-12, yeah. to Sydney 9-6-60. Wow. Bang on double. Bang, Bang on double. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Double the goals, double the behinds, and double the score. Double trouble. And double. I think that absolutely represented the game down to an absolute T. Yeah. So, unfortunately for myself and lots of other Swan supporters crying in your milk this morning, mm. We're just going to have to have a moment of introspection, retrospection, and be on the be on the spectrum for next year, and just be dialed in, and hope it can all go well. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brisbane turned it around. They turned up, and and people didn't expect that, did they? I mean, <clears throat> you yeah. know what happened to me? I've I've watched the first and first half, but I was ready to meet you at the Forest Hotel, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. About to go. Walk outside, yeah. and we've mm. been um, we've been training the two year old Alicia mm. To, mm. to do poos in the potty or the toilet, and yeah. I walked outside to find that she'd she'd done a poo on the couch, um, yeah, bad enough, uh, but then she'd smeared it all over the couch and all over the um the the little um what are they called those little tables. You know, the coffee table. Okay. Coffee gotcha. table. Coffee yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why I was late. I didn't tell you yesterday that's why I was late. No, that's okay. You know? I, I didn't need to know all those details, but yeah. I'm glad you let me know. Yeah. And that and those details were more than a visual re reference to the Swans' performance. Yeah. They were a perfect <laughs> representation of what the Swans were yesterday. Yeah. In saying that, yeah. I will give Brisbane their full props. They were absolutely brilliant. They played as a team. What makes it more amazing for them this year is I believe they had only won one of their first five games to start the season. Wow. They won 14 of their last 16 games. Yep. And in the semis, the first semi, they were behind at one stage by GWS against GWS in the third quarter by 44 points. They came back to win that. They were behind in the preliminary final against Geelong by 25 points. They came back to win that. And I thought that all of that was going to be too much of an uphill Everest for the well-rested Swans. Yeah. But... Apparently, it galvanised them and made yeah. them even stronger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, so well when done. Happen? When has that ever happened? Like, they really are the comeback kings, the, the Lions, oh, the Dandelions. Com completely. I Yeah, I mocked them last week, calling them the Dandelions, yeah. and I had to eat a great big slice of humble pie. Listen, people throw the words... Come back, kids, around pretty loosely. Yeah. But this year has been the quintessential moment where the Brisbane Lions actually are the bona fide comeback kids. Yeah. If ever there was a moment where you could call somebody or a team the comeback kids, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. This that's... was the gold standard. Just for a reference point for all you heartbroken Swan supporters like myself. The Swans have lost their last four grand final appearances. Four. No, didn't know it was four of them. Yeah, it's not going to make you feel any better. In 2014, they lost to the Hawks 137 to 74. In 
2016, it was the Western Bulldogs, 89 to 67. 2002, 133 to 52 against Geelong. And the one we've just had, the double the score one, Brisbane, 120 beat Sydney, 60. So one, it's one been those, a long, hard day. Yeah, one of those they didn't get smashed in, just one. Just one. And yeah. I was talking to someone yesterday. I'm no mathematician, but for the last four occasions, I don't know how they work averages because I used to go to school. When I went to school, I was maths in society, maths in the sandbox. Maths in, so space, I was, in the spaceship, yep. That's exactly right. I'm terrible at maths, but however you work it out, someone was telling me that John Longmire, the Sydney coach, has got a losing average of 56 points in the last four grand finals. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't bode well if you're a Swan supporter, but that's okay. So anyway, what's better? For anyone having a um, hard day. There's always hope next year if you're a Swan supporter. What's better, Drew? Is it better to bow out in the prelims or is it better to get to the grand final and be embarrassed in, embarrassed to be smashed? What is better? Two parts to that answer. It feels better, strangely enough, getting knocked out in the prelims. Mm. But what is technically better is to get to the grand final and get mm. smashed yeah. because at least it gives you hope. Yeah. It gives you delusion. It yeah. lets you know that you can get to the big dance. Yeah, yep, yep. And and Whether you're going to fluff your lines like the four times that the Swans have done in the last four occasions is another matter, but at least you know that you can get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, anyway. Incredible. It, it really is big news the Swans being so much better than everyone, you know, yeah. um, winning the minor premiers and then yeah. getting the, the grand final and losing that badly. And and they they beat Port convincingly two weeks ago. Yes. Well, yeah, but, they um, were well rested. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. that wasn't close at all. While while Brisbane no. Brisbane <clears throat> it never was easy for them. Never. No, and that's what galvanised them. They knew that they could get through the hard situations. They knew that they could. It was a free shot at the stumps. I think they felt, wow, with all the adversity we've gone through, and it really strengthened them and gave them confidence. Anyway, better luck next year. Leading into the rugby league. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. So we now have officially two grand finalists. We have the Storm yep. and we have the Panthers. Yep. Well, yeah. and, and how many people are surprised? None. No. <laughs> no one's been surprised. People have been saying that for six months, honestly. Okay, maybe not that long, but at least three months. We've mentioned it for the last month and a half on our podcast that everybody was playing for hope or a miracle. Yeah, yeah. There were two chances Slim and none, and Slim had left town. So it was always going to be these two combatants in the grand final. Yeah, we knew this. Through, um, take us through Storm Roosters. That was like, it was exciting, a good game. It was exciting to a point. So the Storm won that game 48 points to 18. Huge win. Huge. It ended up being a 30-point blowout, eight tries to three. Yep. You know, it was 22 to six at half time, yep. but then the Roosters got two quick tries in succession, converted them both, yeah, yep. made it 22-18. Yeah. And then, then you're like, whoa, is 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 this going to be something different? <clears throat> What's happening here? That, that That's why it became exciting. That's why. You know, yes, yes. By that stage, the roosters were in it up to their absolute eyeballs. Yep. But then, unfortunately, as we've seen with the storm throughout the course of the year, they flicked the switch, scored 26 unanswered points for the rest of the game. Oh, wow. Pappenhausen for the game got two tries, Hughes, three tries, Munster, two tries, and Howarth, one. You know, the storm. 
Hughes, Munster, and Pappenhausen were just the absolute ringleaders. Yeah. And they gave they they grabbed the roosters by the feathers, gave it to them doggy style, and said, "Who's your daddy?" And the storm were much better against the roosters than the panthers were against the sharks. They were, yeah. they were, and this is the funny thing. So going into the grand final, I was going to give my prediction later, but I'll give it now. Yeah, here's my feelings on it. I feel that out of any of the sides, the Storm are looking the best. They, they are. are in the most electric form out of anyone. And I am the first to admit throughout the earlier to mid-range part of the season had a lot of doubts about the Storm. I was expecting them to fall over. But then heading into the semis, I'm like, wow, these are the real deal. They will be in the grand final regardless. I feel it on form. They are by far and away, even above the Panthers. Yeah. yeah. The side with the much better, more electric form heading in. They seem like an almost unstoppable avalanche right now. But I'm tipping the Panthers. Look, my my son's just come in. Have a, Say hello to JJ. Hey, JJ. And it's just given me. Can you see what that is there, JJ? A chocolate egg. It's snail. Snail. It's snail. Thank it's you. Snail. Let, now, Thank I'll, you. Go put that in your mum's m- mouth. That's just... That was a brilliant. <laughs> but the but dog up. turned French all of a sudden. Yeah. They're quite yeah. delicious, those snails, you know. It was a, a garlic, brilliant. Yeah, a bit of garlic, you know. Yeah, it was a brilliant contribution to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, my my tip is Penrith. Wow, your tip to win is the Panthers. Yes. After after that big spill, like going after the big spill, I know. Oh, I, I, must, I literally the snail, the snail must have got in your ear or something. Really, aren't you listening to yourself? Mate, during that spiel, I literally jerked off Craig Bellamy and the entire team yeah. and had Storm DNA on my chin. Yeah. However, yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. The Panthers have won the last three. Yeah. They just know how to get the damn thing done. Yeah, yeah, true. And while they haven't looked as impressive, yeah. being to the big day the last three times and coming out successful yeah. is amazing. Yeah, so However, their fifth yeah. um, appearance, isn't that amazing as well? In a row. In a row. However, in a row. Yep. there is a caveat to this. Uh, yep. Four years ago, they lost to the Storm in the grand final. Yes. And they haven't, so played, that, since. They haven't played them in a grand final since. Haven't played them in a grand final since. So that is also another thing to consider and quite a significant thing to consider. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, the Roosters, unfortunately, uh, they've lost their last 10 to the Panthers and they've lost and to the Storm. They've only won one out of their past 12. Yeah, wow. So in order to actually win the grand final, they were going to have to knock over one of these sides. I'm not going to lie. I had a slight inkling that, Possibly now, maybe, possibly it was the time to do it. Yeah. But it just wasn't. And the hoodoo from both sides continues. Yeah, yeah. So, but regardless, this is going to be a great grand final next weekend. It really, really, really is. And It um, will be. It will be. um, And just the, like, I love dynasties. You love dynasties when teams or when when individuals just dominate and yes. and for them to get into their fifth grand final for them to possibly win their fourth in a row is second to none huge it really really is huge this is next level stuff we're not for gonna... me i don't like the panthers or the storm but when strictly speaking about the panthers for me this is more than a dynasty. This is like a hangover that just won't end. Yeah. Yep. You rip out the Panadol, you rip out the Barocca. Yep. And these bastards are still here in yep. grand finals. Yep. It's amazing. 
It's it really is amazing. It's huge yeah. that they are yes. in the grand final again. Mm. Um, yes, and it's going to be a huge. You, you know who's going to win it? It's going to be bloody Cleary. Like he it could be was so good in that game in beating Cronulla. Yes. Look, I'm not yeah. going to say Panthers were without mistakes. I thought Panthers no. had more mistakes than Storm. I really thought. Yes, that. yes, yes. We can go over to that uh, Panthers-Sharks game. So the Panthers beat the Sharks 26-6. to six. Yep. So although it was a fairly wide margin, I don't think it accurately told the story of the game. At half time, the Panthers were leading 10 points to two. Yeah. It was anybody's game pretty much the whole time, you know? Yes. Um, very yes. End, it was anybody's game. And and there was also, sorry, I'm interrupting you, Drewy, but they, they took away a couple of, you know, Cronulla tries and you're like, oh, really? You know, mm-hmm. there was a couple of those ones, remember? Yeah, look, there are always decisions up for debate here and there, and that's true. But you know what? In the cold light of day, it wouldn't have had a bearing on the game. The Panthers were always a step ahead. And to be honest, even though the Sharks kind of kept it interesting for a while, even up until halftime, the Panthers never really looked like losing. Hmm. So to run through some of the tries, Alamotti for the Panthers scored in the 22nd minute. Katoa for the Sharks scored in the 59th minute. To'o scored for the Panthers in the 62nd minute. Alamotti again in the 65th minute and Martin in the 76th minute. Unfortunately for the Sharks, they've now only won one out of their last nine finals. Yeah. That's in stark contrast to the Panthers, including grand finals, have won their 10th straight finals game in a row. Mate, you got to go check the guinea pigs. Go get to find the guinea okay. Which is kind of amazing. Yep. So, which is amazing. Actually, speaking of guinea pigs, Joey. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I have decided on the best yeah. mascot for the new Papua New Guinean team. The guinea pig. The guinea pigs. <laughs> Not bad, Papua New Guinea. It goes all right. On Not a, exactly no, completely serious. serious. It would be cool, right? It really would it, be cool. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Yeah. I was a fan earlier of that expansion. Not particularly right now, but it's okay. But I don't mind your suggestion of the guinea pigs. Yeah, I've, I've been the same. When I first found out about it, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever heard about. You know, this is yeah. rugby league. It's great for Australia. It's great for international. It's great for everything. And then I researched a bit into it. Um, yes. It involves, you know, watching YouTube and Googling. That's all it does. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, there's there, there, not there probably is. There is more money in, in, in New Zealand. There is more money in a second team in New Zealand. There is more money in Adelaide. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm treating um, Western Bears as as done and dusted. You know, that's like I know that's they're gonna. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's confirmed. It's purely a political decision yeah, against yeah. China. Yeah, I yeah. don't like the idea because you're getting players and families. It's not an attractive option for them to move over there. Yeah. They'll need to probably build a new gated community for them. Oh, they will. It they'll just have doesn't to, offer they'll have to. that they'll have to, but it just doesn't offer much attraction if you're a prospective player who wants to go over there. But you know, do you see how they were saying that if a player does go over there, that mm. they'll be paying, you know, eight percent tax, not 45 percent tax, which yeah. which which is a lot of money. When you think that these, like the average player, I'm not talking about mm. the Larry Evans and the Clearies, yeah. and play for um, yeah, 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 hundreds yeah, and yeah. Hundreds. They, the average player doesn't play that many games, you know, the average games that are played. Um, so it is a chance of of doubling your income for that short time that you are bringing yeah. bucks. Yeah, look, it's, it's it's a way up lifestyle over finances, basically. 
Got a better lifestyle over here, but the financial side is greater there. Which is something... I don't think that the lifestyle will be that bad there, honestly, because there'll, oh. there'll, be, there'll be apartment blocks, Drewy. There'll be a swimming yeah. pool and there'll be a couple of fields and that'll be it. Nobody comes it's in. It's not around. as nice to go out there beyond the gated community as it no. would be in Australia where you got oh, your freedom. Okay, yeah, but... So, no, they might even have little airports in that gated community too. Who knows what they'll have, but yeah. it, it it you know it'll be interesting. And yeah. and I, I've seen people commenting too about how like no other country like America or Canada has yes. it's you know for yeah. example in the the baseball league they've never gone to Mexico and done a Mexican team or you know Cuba. Oh. And, Cuban team, you know, stuff like that. So, no, it hasn't been done before. Yeah, look, it'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. My favourite saying that drives everyone bananas, watch this space. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited, Drewy. It'll be lots to talk about, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, lots no, that'll be wrong. I, I, Some stuff can go right, but a lot can go wrong. So what I think will essentially happen, obviously, the Western Bears are locked in. We'll have the Papua New Guinean side. And I think the third side will end up being the other New Zealand franchise from down south, which they've penciled in with their mascot as the Kia, which is a bird over there. Whether that happens, but that that third option seems most likely out of the out of the third option, but the other two are almost a certain lock. Yeah. Uh just getting back to the Sharks slightly, good luck for next year. I know you don't care about the Sharks and a lot of people don't, but as a Swan supporter, feeling pretty sad and sorry for myself this morning, I can commiserate with them. Just on one side note, I just feel a bit bad for them because they've got Nico Hines at halfback, who is their million-dollar man. Yep, yep. And I don't want to rag on the bloke, but he just hasn't produced mm. at semi-final level. I think he's one win and five losses out of his six appearances yeah. for the Sharks. Yep. And even being on a million dollars, it's a hell of a lot of money. Mm. He didn't really grab last night by the scruff of the neck or go after the game as such or take chances. And... In the last game that they actually won, Braden Trindle, his 5'8", was the star. Yeah, yeah. And I think as a halfback, you need to grab the game by the scruff, scruff of the neck. And I just felt like he was just trying to guide his way and caress his way through the last game like a blind man walking through a china shop. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I just hope next year... He can rise to the occasion because I feel bad for them coming in the top four and bowing out in spectacular fashion. Yep. Not quite as spectacular fashion as the Swans, but that's a story for next year. Mm. The other story that's come up is, so well done to the Storm, well done to the Panthers, deserving grand finalists. I didn't get your tip. Who are you tipping in the big Oh, oh. Jesus hard, isn't it? But I mean, just looking at their form, I'd tip definitely the storm, you know, yeah. because they yeah. they have been the better team all year and they've been the better team last week and the past few weeks. Um yes. however, um, as you said, Panthers have been here before. Yeah. They've been here three times before. But is yeah. that pressure? I don't think so. Is Cleary on fire, hell yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that really that, is. that kick that he did, I think it was yeah. the, the second or third Panthers try. Yeah, yeah. Just pinpoint accuracy. Like he really, if anyone is going to just make the Melbourne Storm pull their hair out, ten yes. minute warning, ten minute warning. Thank you, thank you. It is, it is him. Yeah. So so I I I don't know. I don't know. Do I have to tip? I'm going to say. I'll just say Storm, just because you said Panthers. Okay, no, that's good. Because yeah. you know what? Even though I've gone the Panthers, yeah, the Storm, I cannot deny, are in the best form out of anybody. Yeah. 
Yep. I'm only going on recent reliability over current form. Yeah. There's no yeah. science to it. Yeah. And that is basically as simple as it gets with my prediction. Yep. 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 I like it though. So like it. yeah. Like and and I think both answers from you or I, what who we're picking and why are both very good answers. Yeah. Yep. Uh the other thing that's happened during the week is the Broncos have lost their coach. Not lost, axed, sacked, axed, fired. Axed, chopped on the chopping block, guillotine, gone. Well, yes. guillotine's not really a chop, is it? It's more of a hang, right? Yeah. If oh, no, that's guillotine, correct. chop your head off. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Well, it kind yep. of has been guillotined, figuratively, not literally. Guillotined, yep, yep. Yeah, and if ever there was a prime first-class narrative of from the penthouse to the shit house, yeah, this yeah. is it. Yeah, This is exhibit A, B, C and D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to remember last year they were four minutes, eight fingers, and one thumb yep. away from lifting yep. that trophy. Yep. They only had one thumb off the trophy. Yeah. Four minutes away before Nathan Cleary broke their hearts. And this year has been a complete and utter unmitigated disaster. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm just surprised that he was given the flick because mm. sure they've done badly this year, but they were in the grand final last year. Yes. Like, isn't yes. that and and we haven't even had finished the season this year, and he's been given the flick already. Like, you know what? I you gotta be and, fast, you know. Is it not fair? Like, it doesn't sound that cool. I agree with you. I would have given him another season and said, listen, if you don't win next season, yeah, that's it. You're done. But to play devil's advocate on the other side of the coin, I'm not saying I agree with their decision, but I think these factors would have come into consideration. Mm. He's been coached for four years. He's only made one finals campaign, yeah. missed the finals three times. Yeah. But as you said, in that campaign, they made the grand final and only won only lost with four minutes to go. But they didn't make it three times, and I do believe, I reckon, outside of the Roosters, Panthers and Storm for the last four years, they've had the best roster outside those three. I reckon they've probably had the fourth-place roster. If at a pinch you want to say fifth, okay, but no lower than a top-five roster. Yep. And I think not making the semis three out of those four years with that kind of roster, the patience has worn thin. Yeah, yeah. You know what it kind of reminds me of a bit? I know it's What's completely that? not related, but kind of related, is yeah. now we we spoke on the phone about this. Um, mm. It was Manly sacked Tuvi. Was it sacked Tuvi? Yes, sacked yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. during the season. Mm. And we actually made it to the finals before like after he'd been given the boot who was it no was it no or was it des no no i i don't think you were right with the two v one they came ninth that year but look these these things happen and and like situations like what you just said can happen again uh the interesting thing for me, though, is that... Like, like Drew, listen, what if they yeah. sacked this bloke, you know, if they said to this Brisbane coach, they said, you're gone three weeks ago, and they just scraped into the eight, and then, mm -hmm. believe it or not, he's sacked, and, yes. they, they, you know, they start winning. Wouldn't that yes. be... You know, like, it's not unbelievable that it would happen that here you are you know, going in, having a shot at the grand final and you've yeah. been sacked, you know? It can happen. Yeah. I know we don't follow rugby union very often, but yeah. in the mid-2000s, I'm going to say around 2004, 2005, oh, yep. 
in the Super 12, as it was back then, I believe. Back when it was, uh, big, the, it was big then, Drew. It was, it big. was huge in the Super Rugby. They sacked coach David Nusafora, who was the coach for the Brumbies. Yep. They sacked him that year. They said, you're not services are not wanted that year. Yeah. And he went on to win that year. Yeah, well, while being a sacked coach. And what did he do the following year? Well, he wasn't part of their team. Yeah, but did they he still sack him. You know, you'd think he'd get signed. I don't know. Maybe he peeled the oranges or brought out some water. He just wasn't heard of again in the Super Rugby. Okay. <laughs> this is a weird story. But these things, all sorts of weird and wonderful things can happen. But yeah. what I was about to say is what is interesting is the Lions in the AFL yep. – and the Broncos in the Rugby League were exactly the same position last year, in exactly the same position. They both lost the grand final. Correct. The and, Lions. And, and, and the Pies only only just beat the Broncos as well. Like, that wasn't a smashing. Like, you, you yeah. only felt confident that the, 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 the I almost said Broncos, uh, yeah. but it was both teams that the, God, the Dandelions – yeah, had lost, you know, two three minutes tops before mm. that final whistle. So yeah, they yeah. they were, um, you know, they were in the same boat, just oh, lost. absolutely identical. Yep. So, unfortunately, one side has gone away and really sort of worked on everything and worked through everything and gone straight up to the penthouse now with all the babes, with all the alcohol, with all the coke, and yeah. won the big dance. Yeah. The other side has had the world's biggest hangover and ended up some sort of busking homeless man doing a tap dance for money on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. I never thought about that. They were in the exact same position this time last year. Yes, absolutely. So come, look where the other one's gone and it's actually interesting there have been rumors that most sides during training sessions just strictly do their training session but the broncos is such a huge big and iconic club possibly arguably maybe the most biggest on iconic current nrl club in the country yeah. it's huge the broncos so huge. apparently they get a crowd to every training session yeah like actual people flooding into the ground. If, if I was part of that, I'd be like, hey, no, not in our training session. Apparently their dressing rooms are filled with family and friends and hangers on and everything. Mate, no, yeah. players only. Keep it strict. Yeah. Mind on the job. It's all right to do that sort of shit when you're winning, but when you're losing, that's not going to help you, I don't reckon. Yeah. 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 So anyway. Well, it's yeah. the year of what? It's the year of Brisbane mm. and the year of, who knows, year of Melbourne and year of uh, Panthers again. The, not the year. Yes. The, you know, four years. Will it, yeah. yeah, will it be a four, Pete? Or will the storm come back to haunt the Panthers? Yeah, one that minute. That will be the uh, question answered. One minute, Drew, one minute. Yeah. And... And how long, if Panthers win this, how long can they keep doing this? And and the answer is not much longer, seriously. Because no, not much longer. Yeah. And I'm it gonna finish happen. this. I'm gonna finish it by saying I find this even more impressive than St. George's eleven in a row back in the day, because yeah. this is doing it during the salary cap era yeah. where you can lose players year after year, and they have lost plenty of players, but they still keep winning the damn thing. Yeah. It's not a dynasty. It's a hangover. Yeah, yeah. And for the Broncos, I wish you luck. Kevin Walters moving forward next year. Yeah, but it does does sound a bit weird that, you know, Panthers are the only team from, you know, you know Sydney, you know, but yes. rugby league is Sydney and... and, and um...